Welcome to Worthington Home. I'm Chris. So even though today is St. Patrick's Day and I am wearing green, it's not a very vibrant green, but it is green. Um, and actually my son is home from college with his girlfriend and they headed down to New Haven for the big St. Patrick's Day parade. So hopefully they'll have a lot of fun. But I'm actually in the mood to redo my hutch and do a little bit of decorating and more of a spring motif and bring in a few Easter decorations as well. So I hope you'll join me while I do that. Okay, so here is my box out of the attic full of sort of spring and Easter stuff. So I have this pretty little wreath. It's a little chick in a frame. And see what else is in here. I have just a variety of pretty little eggs. And this bunny's really cute. There's this little purple egg that sits in a cup. Like this. A little bunny plate. Here he is. A lot of this stuff was my mom's. My brothers and I would sometimes pick up little Easter decorations for her and bring them to her on Easter. She enjoyed them. And after she passed, I ended up with them. So I have more than I would otherwise have for that reason. But I do enjoy them. I, mean, I probably won't use all of them. I'll just take a little selection. This guy is adorable. I have two of him. He is Lennox. Isn't he cute? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have two of him because I think actually my mom bought that one and bought one for her and one for me as she often did. She was really thoughtful that way. Here's another Lennox guy. I got him from an estate sale, so he was always mine. Isn't he cute? Okay. Let's see. This little bunny with a flower, little tulip. Little Easter sign. Little wooden bunny. It's like a little group of bunnies that hold, I don't know, I guess they hold a candle. I don't think it's marked in any way. Here's another little bunny sign. She always had these two in her kitchen right on the windowsill. So these bring back some memories for sure. I'm really doing my best to just enjoy the decorations and not feel a little bit sad that my mom isn't here anymore. She's been gone for four years now. It's incredible how time has gone by. These are just plastic eggs. Here's another one of the bunnies with the basket. This actually has its original Lennox box, which I will keep together. That was clearly the one that was my mother's because she was organized in a way that I am not. And then I have some little holders for photographs, or as you know, I love to use postcards, little Easter basket and Oh my gosh, this guy is a craft. It was a sock that was made into a little bunny. My grandmother made that. It's so cute. I think that's it. I get, oh, 
Oh, no, one more thing. <laughs> this little, little hanging bunny in the shape of an egg because why not have a bunny in the shape of an egg and then hang it? Okay, so here is the total stash. I also forgot to show you this little egg. That's a tree with little Easter trinkets on it. I'm not even gonna bother with this because I know the cats will want to smack these little ornaments around, but this is a cute piece. My son used to absolutely love this thing when he was little, but I think this is not the year for it. So I'm gonna put that aside. The cats are already showing way too much interest in this bunny. So he's gonna go to the side as well. She is gonna go to the side as well. I'm not gonna use that hanging basket. I'm not gonna use this brown bunny. I'm not gonna use this little egg holder or the plastic eggs. I am probably not gonna use this purple one, but everything else is up for consideration. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, this is like a little um, plastic floral arrangement piece. I'm gonna stick this in my compote and I'm gonna put this little wreath right inside it. And then I'm gonna take some of these little pretty eggs and just pop them inside for a little Easter floral arrangement. I think that's gonna look pretty. Um, and I'm not gonna have flowers on the table as I usually would when we um, entertain for Easter because I know the cats will just pull apart the flowers and it will end in tears and why go there? There's no reason to frustrate ourselves. There. So here's a little close up of this little Easter centerpiece I just kind of put together. You know, it's not gonna win any major awards for beautiful, perfect centerpieces, but I think it's cute, it's festive, and it's cat proof. What more can I ask for right now? Okay. There's quite a bit of glare here, but you can get the idea. I just put this little Easter decoration at the window and I just tied a little velvet bow that I had to give it a little extra something. And there is little Miss Naughty who's thinking about how she can eat that bow if she can get her hands on it. Iris. Iris. She is deep in thought and of course she can't hear me. So here are a few other things I forgot about. This little wooden rabbit, these baskets I had thrifted a while ago, and these little bunnies that I had pulled from an estate clean out. And then of course I have a whole stack of Easter postcards. And of course I won't use them all. Oh, that's a birthday one. I won't use them all, but I will pick out some. I love that one. It looks like Iris. Put that one aside because that one's definitely getting used. Aw. I just love these. So anyway, I'll just show you two more. Very cute. So to get this show on the road, I need to clean off this hutch and take down all of the remaining St. Patrick's Day decor items. And I can give everything a good dust and then begin again with spring slash Easter decor. I really like the way this hutch had turned out. So I hope I can recreate something nice this time around. Okay, so one of the first steps, well, the first step was cleaning off the shelves, which I did the other day, and I shared some footage of that. The next thing I wanna do is put back some of the Port Marion pieces that are usually on the hutch, because I think they definitely have nice springtime colors. 
and I think that they'll look beautiful and I'll probably just keep them here for the rest of the year until the fall rolls back again. So I wanna to try to incorporate this with some of the Easter pieces and give it a little bit, um, probably a little bit more of an eclectic look than it had before when it was really just the Port Marion, which was pretty, but maybe a little bit boring. So I'm gonna play around with it and I'm gonna show you what I do. Okay, it's nice to see these big Port Marion plates coming back out again. And I don't know if I can keep this black toll tray with the pretty yellow flowers or not. I'm not sure if they're pulling colors that are too different, but um, I'm gonna play around and see what I can do. I don't know if the black is just too heavy next to the white, but I'll put a few more pieces in and then decide. I'm gonna add these little Easter signs. Those will just be temporary. And then after the season, I'll take them down again. Some of the bigger pieces go on the bottom shelf, as you can see. It's harder to put together a seasonal hutch than you might think. It's hard to get all of the shapes and sizes right. And of course, I'm also trying to remember how I had it before I had disassembled all of the Port Marion, which I did right after Christmas. I think that white bunny is gonna be perfect and the plate, but I'm not sure that this grouping is working out. Okay, yep, definitely that black toll tray needs to go. It is beautiful, but I think just doesn't work in that space. But that's okay, this is all trial and error. Yep, that is much better. That makes a big difference, I think. And I think the little pops of green really help. Otherwise, it's just a little bit too white. Now you can see I've added in quite a few pieces, just trying to make sure there's some depth. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, my intention, as I said before, is to break up some of the Port Marion, but I don't know, I kind of like it more or less how it was, but with a little bit of Easter thrown in the mix. I'm pretty happy with this. I think my next job is gonna be to try to decorate the fireplace mantle in the kitchen. So that's next. Okay, we're gonna start as we always do, and that is by cleaning off what's already there. It's time to put all of the St. Patrick's Day decor into a box and pack it back into the attic until next year. I know I wanna use some antique Easter postcards, so I'm starting there. And I definitely wanna use these little Lennox bunnies. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice if I had bigger pieces um, to either side of the mirror as opposed to the Lennox bunnies, which are on the smaller side, but I'm really just using what I have. I don't wanna go out and buy anything new. So this is a little bit smaller in scale than would be ideal, but I'm gonna make it work. And I think it's pretty and gives me a little bit of that festive spring touch I'm looking for. I'm popping in some antique postcards in other places as well, just for the color and the images. I think this may be done. Okay, so let's just take one more look. I'm gonna fix this little stack. So actually, let's remove that right now. So here is the final hutch, with just a little bit of Easter. And there's the top. And then the mantle 
is pretty basic. Just have some postcards and a little Lennox bunny and the little bunnies I found at the clean out. And I put some little candies in these glass vintage baskets and some more postcards. It's pretty simple, but definitely gives an Easter feeling. And I think it looks cute for now. Yesterday, I passed a Goodwill in Farmington, somewhere near the West Farms Mall in Connecticut, and I hadn't been there before and I hadn't seen it before. So I thought I'd just take a little bit of time today and check it out. Let's go. Okay, we're here. This isn't actually Farmington. This is New Britain, right on the Farmington line. So I had the location wrong, but hopefully the store will be good. We'll find out. little bag. I like the colors. It would be fun for the summertime. I'll have to give that a closer look. They have quite a few bags here, but nothing is really jumping out at me. This one is cute, but um, on closer examination, it has some damage. Check out this blazer. It says Worthington. I think I was meant to have that. Unfortunately, I don't tend to wear blazers as the weather gets warmer, so maybe next time. Look at all the clothes. There's some nice things in this group. I like this coat. They have a lot of Vera Bradley bags. I see a lot of these at thrift stores. $5.99, not a bad price. $9.99 for the bigger one. This rug is a great pattern and great color. It needs a deep clean. Here we have some seasonal decor. Just taking it all in. Look at this big tree plate. That would make quite a statement. I like this bookend. I really wish there were two. This is a pretty little tray. Made in England for Victoria's Secret. That is something I have not seen before. This picture is very sweet. It has like a courier and I've seen and some lusterware teacups that really just don't have any resale value, but they're very, very pretty. Well, there's another one. These are cute little mugs. Little Christmas tree. Santa Paws is coming to town, $2.99. This is kind of a nice one as well, but it's definitely not old. It's an interesting little like copper bucket. Copper Crock Club. These are interesting, $3.99. Dishwasher safe, good to know. This is a cute little piece, $3.99. A teacup and saucer. 
canes or cons, I'm not sure the maker, but made in China. This one was made in Japan. It's a pretty little plate. It's very hard to read some of these back stamps. This set doesn't look old, but I love the color combinations. Not marked. That's interesting. A little like war scene. This plate's beautiful. Oh, chip. Oh, and it's Limoges. What a shame. That would have been my find for the day. I've been having very bad luck finding Limoges that's not broken lately. This tray is great for $5.99, but I would never be able to fix that pitting in it. It's a cute little Christmas frame. Lots of little odds and ends on this shelf. Some little cartoon characters. I like this striped bold. It doesn't look old, but it has kind of a cool shape to it. Time and table. I think that was $4.99. This is really attractive. $7.99 is more than I'm gonna pay for this piece that was made in Germany because sadly, I know the resale is just not really there, even though it is a nice piece. We have a lot of artwork today. It's kind of an interesting print. They have quite a bit to choose from, depending on your tastes and what you're in the market for. This is an interesting kind of panel set. It's not old, although it, it looks a little bit old in this picture. You no, know I'm a sucker for a cat. That is a very tall lighthouse, as it should be. This is a really interesting old child's rocker called Teeter Tot with cute little ducks on it. It is adorable and seems to work really well. This could be a cute little porch or patio set. I like the legs on it. I don't know that the table matches particularly well. $149.99 seems like a lot to ask for it in my opinion. And it looks like it's also missing at least one chair. I've never seen a bin of fabric at Goodwill before. That's something new. I like this blue fabric very much. This is an interesting piece. It's like a vinyl um, consistency, but it might actually be good for a project that I have at home. I'm definitely thinking about it, $6.99. It's a possibility. So that was a really nice Goodwill. I will definitely go back to this one, um, but I only bought one thing. I purchased this little bit of fabric and actually it's not even fabric, it's like leather. <laughs> it's something like that, but it actually might be perfect for a project that I need to do. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. Eric picked up this adorable little stool for me while he was at an auction. And it's perfect for my vanity table. But you can see that the upholstery is in very bad repair. Now I can reupholster this, but I've never reupholstered anything round before. So I decided to use the same kind of vinyl fabric. I picked this up while I was out thrifting, and I think the color 
it will be a nice complement with the wallpaper. The lighting's not great in here, but the wallpaper background is yellow. And so I'm gonna give this a try and do a little reupholstering today. Wish me luck. The back of this piece is really shot. Cellulose fiber pad. Do not remove under penalty of law. Well, I am gonna have to probably remove it because I think when I pull up this um, paper backing, yeah, it's just gonna crumble right apart in my hands. And I can't reupholster this chair without doing that. My first step is to remove the staples so I can get this cardboard backing off of the stool. The staples are on there pretty good. It's really important to disassemble this entire piece so I can see how it was put together because that will guide my reupholstery. Oof, that's pretty shot. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the staples out of the fabric and I can see there was no special trick to how they upholstered it. They just really pulled the fabric very tightly around. And again, it's not really fabric per se, it's like a vinyl or a PCP kind of thing. I just wanna point out this is not a tutorial of any kind. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. I don't possess the expertise to really teach anybody else how to do this. I'm just kind of feeling my way through it. And here you can see a little bit of a close up. Now I'm just peeling off the fabric. I've gotten all the staples out and there's the foam pad and the wooden um, insert that gives it its shape. So I'm using that and tracing onto the new fabric so I know how to cut. I want to make sure I give myself plenty of room. And I'm going to pull the fabric a lot tighter than I normally would because, um, because this is, like I said, that sort of vinyl plasticky material and I want to get it really tight. And it's okay if I have these folds that are happening on the back as long as they don't show up on the front and they're not. This is a pretty straightforward project actually. You can see here I'm mostly done. I'll just finish this up again pulling it tightly so that the top is nice and smooth. I'm going to cut off some of this ex excess fabric just so that the base is a little bit flatter. If I want to get fancy, I can put some kind of a backing to cover up all of this, um, you know, the folds and things and just make it look a little bit smoother and more seamless. But to be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to bother. This is just for me and I'm not going to check the bottom of it. It looks good. giving it a few more staples just to make sure everything stays in place. That looks really good. Here's the finished result. Okay, now for the moment of truth. We need to get the full effect. So my husband spent $10 on the little stool at the auction. The fabric was $6.99. So for under $20, we got a really cute vanity stool and I'm really happy with it. I think it gives the room a little extra something and it was a fun project to do as well. So I'm happy with how it came out. What do you think? 
So this video had a lot of different things going on. We did a little bit of decorating for the springtime. I freshened up my hutch and my fireplace mantle. We did a little bit of thrifting, topped off by an upholstery project. So I think we've hit the whole range of topics for today. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, it was a lot of fun to make it for you. So if you enjoyed it, please take just a moment and hit like, and most importantly, please subscribe if you haven't already. It tells YouTube that my videos are worth sharing with other people, and that in turn helps my channel grow. You can also hit the notification bell so you never miss a video, but in general, I post my videos on Wednesdays and Fridays, Eastern Standard Time. So that's what I have for you today. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you have a wonderful day, and I certainly hope to see you next time. Bye for now.